And so throughout scripture, women have stepped up and were used of God to bring significant victories for the people of God. Several years ago, God, I was in a rally with young people and the Lord caused the scripture to come back. He said that in the last days, he's going to pour out of his spirit on his hand. Yes. And they shall prophesy. I believe, brothers and sisters, that we are living in a time when God is anointing and raising up women that will speak with power and authority in the kingdom of God. Yes. Women in whose mouth the word of God will be. We've got a lot of women on the outside of the secular world who are trying to redefine womanhood and what the role of a woman should be and who is a woman. The first time in my life I ever heard the term gender confusion. It's not confusion with the genders, it's confusion with people. But I'm thanking God that God is going to raise up women in this time who are going to put an end to the confusion and state definitively that they were wonderfully and beautifully made, created in the image of God. Yes. Hallelujah, that they are indeed the helpmate, that they are the crown of God's creation, that they are beautiful, hallelujah, they are virtuous, they are blessed, anointed and gorgeous. How many of you can thank God for our women this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for my wife every day. If it hadn't been for her, I couldn't make it to the ministry. All right. But she was there, always a silent partner, full of strength, tenacity, and grace. And then God blessed us with a daughter who is just as graceful, and they stand in the ministry. So, brothers and sisters, follow me this morning. As we go into the Word of God, I want to take you to the book of Judges this morning. The book of Judges. And we go to Judges chapter 9. Judges chapter 9. When you have it, say glory to God. We go to verse number 50. I'm going to read this verse and I'm going to back up a little bit. Give you the background. And then we're going to come to our story. Verse number 50 of Judges chapter 9. Then, I'm reading from the King James Version. Then went Abimelech to Thibet. And encamped against Thibet and took him. But there was a strong tower within the city, and to the third, all the men and women and all of the city, and shut it to them and galloped to the top of the tower. There was a war. There was war in the camp of Israel. There was a battle going on. I need to let you know two things. Number one, about the Mimelech, and two, how he came to the room. You see, the Mimelech rose up after Gideon had led the children of Israel to victory against the Midianites. One of the things I'm recognizing more than I read the scriptures that it's extremely important that we understand generations and legacies. Midian was the descendant of the son of Abraham and Keturah.
So we were having a conflict between people who had family ties. But you hear Mount Seir, that's Esau's clan. Yes. You hear Moab, that's Lot's clan. You have Ammon. And when you read the scriptures, it is amazing to see how many battles took place between Israel and these descendants of their brothers. It's been coming home to me more and more, folks, how important that you and I recognize how things can pass on from generation to generation. Uh -huh. And decisions you make today can have detrimental effects long after you're dead and gone. Amen. Abraham was long gone. Esau was long gone. Lot was long gone. But the decisions they made were now affecting their children. I have been made to back up and to think about my own life and to see how my ancestors and their decisions and the decisions that I make can be either setting blessings or cursings in the way of my children. Yep. Yes. The Bible says that with parents eat sour grapes, children's teeth are set on edge. Yes. Oftentimes we think that that is restricted just to sinners. But it also happens to you and me if we do not recognize that your life is going to have an impact on your generations. And perhaps what's happening in your life that's inexplicable and difficult is as a result of things that your ancestors have practiced. Yes, yes, yes. We need a revelation. It's not normal if in every generation most of the women haven't shown out the wedlock or broken marriages. There's something to that. Yes. We've got to find out why that's happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that our girls today don't be affected by the same thing. Amen. Abimelech came to power because a father made a bad pronouncement. After Gideon conquered the Midianites, Gideon said, I don't want to lead this one anymore. Let me say this to you folks. A calling from God is not like a tap. You turn it on and turn it off when you like. If God calls you, he calls you. You're called to the day you die. You don't serve God at one season and at another season. You forget that. That's why I'm so blessed by Bonnie. Hallelujah. Amen. She knew way back there from 1968 that this is what God would have her do and she's still singing for the glory of God. Are you hearing the folks? Gideon did not want to bear this yoke of leadership. Folks, yoke of the yoke of leadership is a very heavy yoke. Yes. Not everybody can bear it. <laughs> Ask your pastor. <laughs> Some of you have been around and you know why. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've been doing it for 40 something years now. <laughs> so I know what I'm talking about. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I used to, when I did history in school, they told me, on easy lies the head that wears the crown. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Mr. Obama found that out for you. You know, you know that now. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> it's always easy. <laughs> When somebody else is wearing the crown, yeah. to find out, well, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, nah, nah, nah. but when you got the crown, you'll find out the problem that comes with the crown. Yeah. So, uh, Gideon said, I don't want this thing no more. Yeah. Man, I've gone through some stuff as a pastor. At the time, I said, not me again, man. That's what caused Moses to miss it, man. Yeah. Sometimes it becomes very, very heavy, man. Yeah. Sometimes it comes be it looks like if this is a jar that is thankless, it's unthankful, hallelujah. Like all the ingrates come by you to, to stop for a little while. Are you hearing me, folks? Uh, some of you know that in your family, you, you help everybody. And then when you finish helping everybody, hallelujah, and everybody is set, they forget you ever exist. Are you hearing me, folks? Oh, I know I've got some people here who say, me, I never help nobody again because I help in all of the doctors once. Uh, am I talking to anybody here this afternoon? 
So Gideon says, I don't want to be no leader. But the man did not stop and said, me nor my sons. All right. Said, neither me nor my sons. Watch your mouth. Tell somebody, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch because you can be put in yokes on your children. You can be put in yokes on your life with your mouth. You know, you get angry, somebody get you ticked off, and you stop. Watch your mouth. The Bible says the power of life and death is real. Huh? Hallelujah. So some. Some hardships people are suffering right now, they spoke themselves into that position. Give the other said, not need a master. Now there's one thing I can't understand, Pastor Cameron. How this man got 70 sons. He had 70. How he managed to get 70 sons and fight all the them? That man be busy. <laughs> 